Green Bay is like an albatross around my neck. Mm -hmm. Anybody who mentions Green Bay mentions Dudley Towns. Mm -hmm. And this arose by a speech. I would say it's an unfortunate speech, and to that, to that extent, I apologize. After Green Bay, and first let me explain this. When the massacre, I call it a massacre because that's what it was. Just let me clear about it. The government said nobody. Looking at it quite objectively, it was a mass, a planned massacre, not by the government, but by the intelligence service, the military, military. intelligence. There was a competition between the military and the police intelligence. There was a conflict there. And the, the conflict was that which of them was more anti rascal than the other. That is what they considered Ooh. the enemy. That is what they considered the enemy, Rasta movement. And both the military and the police were vying as to which one was the more anti-Rasta. Anti the military came up, military intelligence, I forget his name now, I'll never remember it, and no more to, who's leading the military intelligence, concocted a plan, as I see it objectively, that they would take some of these people from the south side, carry them over to this place and shoot them up. The men were told that they were going down there to receive guns. Yeah. That there were guns in there, they could go down and see these guns on a ship. And uh, they followed. They were misled. Now, as the many rascals among them, they were misled. I think ten of them went down. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, I at that time was not Minister for National <laughs> Security, and I wanted to take that albatross off my neck. The Minister of National Security was not me, my predecessor. Cablemon. Cablemon. He was there. I was in the hospital. I didn't even know about this thing. Chicken farm. I didn't mm. even know about this until somebody came into the hospital. The person who came into the hospital and told me was Colonel Green, the head of the JDF, yeah. who is still there today, alive, and can bear the soul. He came to the hospital to see me a few days before I was to come out. Which hospital were you in at the time? St. Andrews. And he came there and told me that. <coughs> The cabinet had appointed me as Minister for National Security. I said, okay, I mean, I didn't change before. From Foreign Minister to Minister of National Security. And um, he mentioned this matter of Green Bay as something has happened, but not that it was a bad thing. Not that the scandal was there. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. When I came out of hospital a few days later, I accepted the papers and the form of what people had said, and you know, the official report. The official report was about these people bastards who were going to beat these people. Not that it was a trap. The official report wasn't true. That was the office I saw. Those were the papers I inherited. Mm -hmm. And I actually had to follow what I have. I feel this is so. But I went out to the ground. One of the first things I did was to go out on the grounds to look. Because if it was in true, a sort of the British, if the official report was true, I'd have expected to find some guns or something left there on the ground if there was a fight between them. There was no such thing as well. one old, I suppose, 1922 Russian revolver, revolver, which was probably in the grass from the time Columbus discovered the place. An old nothing. I began to have my little doubts about it. Nevertheless, by that time, there was a very low, low uh, level of credibility in the country about the, the, the forces, both the army and the police, about this massacre. Because a few had escaped, a few of them had escaped and told the story, mm -hmm. the true story, mm -hmm. which we didn't hide, didn't have, didn't know, didn't believe. I had to believe the story I had mm -hmm. before. But the morale was so very low in the army, particularly in the army, that my prime minister, and I'm going to make it quite clear for the first time, and they said to me, Look, Dudley, I think you can do this. You are now Minister of National Security, and people have confidence in you. I would like you to do something to buoy up the morality and give the up the soldiers some pep talk. Get their spirits up again because now everybody is against them. Go and talk to them and give them a pep talk. We had a meeting of the officers of the army and at that meeting I made the unfortunate remarks. Listen to what I said to them. I said, you know, as long as there are guns, guns coming into this country, you're going to have trouble. As long as there are guns coming in here, there's going to be a lot of things. There's going to be more than one Green Bay. Because the people who go out for guns, like the people in Green Bay, which I believe at the time, mm -hmm. the people who went out, they were not angels. And they took that little phrase out of the whole thing, and that is the truth. So I apologize because those statements on their own could be 
rightfully interpreted as justifying the action. Yes. Mm -hmm. It could be. I could say to justify Green Bay. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can be both judge and jury, which mm -hmm. is wrong in law, mm -hmm. wrong in every concept of ethics. But that is the unfortunate statement that I made. But I want to make it quite clear. I was not the member that carried out Green Bay. I was not minister. I was not responsible. But I wear the arrows around my neck. And I can't get rid of it. I made an apology of the same type at the breakfast club once. When both Abrams from the Labour Party and Beverly Mandy hugged me up and said, Well, I'm glad somebody is here to talk the truth and explain it. And they said, We are glad you came out clear with it. It isn't clear because until thy name is clear, I was not the member of who had listened to or arranged anything to do with Green Bay which took place before I took the ministry. That is the truth. And it can be six, it can be judged because if you look at the minutes, and the minutes are there, and the Gazette must have it, when I was appointed, and look at the date of Green Bay, which I haven't done, but I know. It's got to show that Green Bay occurred before I was appointed. That's one way to check whether I'm talking the truth or not. Thank you for the clarification.